This is a drone disguised as an RC car. Seriously, it even uses a simple RC car transmitter for full control. And because it's no longer locked to the ground by pesky wheels and gravity, you can drive it over rough terrain at absolutely crazy speeds. I even hooked mine up with a camera in the nose so I can drive it around with FPV. This is amazing! We'll see just how fast this thing can go later in the video. It uses conventional drone motors for lift and stabilization with an additional thruster in the back for forward propulsion. A LiDAR distance sensor locks it at a fixed altitude, so I only have to control the forward speed and turn rate, just like an RC car. This thing is incredibly fun, and while it may look relatively simple in nature, there were tons of engineering challenges to address to get it working this well. So in this video, I'll show you how I designed and built this RC land speeder, and then I'll put it to the test to see just how fast it can go. I'll also release all of my design files and codes so you can try building one yourself. Now, this project definitely wasn't my original idea. People have been putting pusher props on multi-rotors for ages now with interesting and mixed results. A nice guy by the name of Eric reached out a few months ago and pointed me toward his website where he's been perfecting his speeder design. He even used my flight control code DREAMFLIGHT for some of his early prototypes. Eric has been iterating on this idea with tons of versions of different shapes and sizes, and it was this video that totally convinced me that I needed to try building my own. So definitely go check out Eric's website linked in the description to see the evolution of this idea. I took a shot at designing my own airframe design using Eric's designs as inspiration. Four mini quad motors with five inch props provide all of the lift and stabilization so it can keep level, and a fifth motor in the back will provide the forward propulsion. These side panels will hopefully protect the props a bit, and if not, they still make it look pretty cool. All of the electronics will fit inside the fuselage, including an FPV camera in the nose, ground distance sensor, and a four cell LiPo battery for power. I designed this airframe to be printed on a 300 by 300 millimeter 3D printing bed in just two pieces. You'll see pretty shortly how this all comes together. So I grabbed the parts off the printer and got to work assembling my RC land speeder. First, I soldered up an electronic stack that includes the ESC, FPV transmitter, and the flight controller. Welcome to my channel where every video is an ad for my open source flight controller DreamFlight. More on the custom code for that later. These electronics were kindly donated from my trusty racing drone, which you may have seen balancing an inverted pendulum in one of my other videos. Then I installed some M3 heatset inserts to mount the electronic stack. Before screwing that all in place, I fed the motor wires through the channels in the arms and soldered them to the 4-in-1 ESC. The beauty in this design is that the motor mounting hardware is what secures the top piece of the airframe to the bottom. We won't screw the motors in yet so that we can keep the top off for more access while we finish up the electronics. Next, I installed the LiDAR distance sensor and soldered that up to the flight controller as well. I also secured the FPV camera in the nose and plugged that in. At the back end, I hooked up the receiver and additional ESC for the pusher motor. Now for the top piece. I press fit some magnets so that the top hatch can satisfyingly snap in place, and then dropped it on top of the bottom piece with all the electronics. Then I could finally finish mounting all of the motors, which in turn completed the assembly. The side prop guards were a bit too weak for my liking, so I went ahead and lined them with carbon fiber for extra strength, which also had the bonus of making it look three times cooler. I'll include some additional pieces in the parts list to strengthen the sides if you build one of these yourself and can't easily do a composite layup. I'm pretty happy I could squeeze all these electronics into such a small 3D printed drone frame, and I'm even more happy that this particular design was my first try at it. Someone who actually got it right on their first try was the sponsor of this video, PCBWay, who kindly sent me this backup frame printed in nylon. I designed this frame for FDM printers, but it came out pretty well using PCBWay's MultiJet Fusion printer service. PCBWay has tons more manufacturing options on their website for 3D printing, CNC machining, and of course PCB manufacturing. So big thanks to them for sponsoring this video and making sure I can keep flying when I break this first frame. One thing to note about this design is that the motors are mounted at a slight angle outwards. This gives more yaw control effectiveness, which we may need at higher speeds when aerodynamic forces will try to prevent us from turning. Yaw control is typically achieved by varying the diagonal motor speeds which spin in the same direction. The difference in torque between the two opposite rotating motors creates the yawing moment that rotates the whole vehicle. But by angling the motors outwards as I've done, we get an additional yawing moment from the outward component of thrust. This is much more effective than relying on the motor torque alone. I'm hoping that angling the motors outward will also direct leads we kick up out and away from the LiDAR sensor in the center, since we all know what happens when that gets obstructed. Right now, I just have this set up like a regular old quadcopter, which is how the default DreamFlight code works out of the box. I also snuck in a receiver for my normal transmitter so I can fly this thing like a regular drone while I get it tuned. I want to get the hover and altitude hold locked in before we move on to control with the RC car controller. 
and in almost no time, we get a perfect hover with excellent altitude hold. The altitude hold code I added simply reads the data from the LiDAR sensor, which is hooked up to a serial port on the microcontroller. Then it filters the reading to remove noise and calculates a stabilized output using a simple PID controller. I made sure to compensate the altitude reading by the measured drone angle, so a larger distance reading still reports the correct altitude. In the control mixer, the stabilized output from the altitude hold code is assigned to all of the lift motors, so they now react to the measured altitude. I know all this looked like it went smoothly, but I did have a bad mishap off camera. A rogue mini quad motor will humble you real quick, so please make sure you're testing thoroughly with the props off or else it'll look like you lost a fight with a cheese grater. Now we can add the features we need to be able to control this thing with the RC car transmitter. This transmitter has three total channels, throttle, steering, and an auxiliary channel. I map the throttle output directly to the pusher motor for forward motion. For braking in reverse, instead of dealing with confusing ESC protocols to reverse the motor, I decided to just map the back half of the throttle input to a pitch angle. So now the drone stays level when going forward, but pitches back to brake and reverse. For steering, we need to do a little bit of control input mixing. If we were to simply pin the roll angle to zero and steer with yaw, I can pretty confidently say that we would end up drifting around too much rather than actually turning. What we need to do is mix in some roll with the yaw so that as we want to turn tighter, we start banking into the turn. So this is how I map the steering input to the yaw rate and roll angles. The yaw rate relationship to the input is purely linear. More turn input gives more yaw. The bank angle relationship looks more like this. At very small inputs, the angle is small, but it quickly grows and saturates at about 75% of the input. I'm hoping that this gives me some fine pointing control for small inputs, but will quickly fade in the banking for more aggressive coordinated turns. Now let's go try it out. All right, last thing in the radio I did was map this third auxiliary channel to take off and landing. So when I push it, it should take off to a fixed altitude and then I'm free to fly. So let's try it out. Nice. I was honestly blown away by how fun this thing was to drive around. Normally when I'm flying a racing drone, it takes a whole lot of focus to do these sorts of coordinated maneuvers. But with the RC car radio and control input mixing, I was throwing it around like a pro on my first battery. It definitely drifts around a lot and takes some getting used to to keep it stationary. You kind of have to turn it so its back is facing the direction it's drifting and apply a bit of throttle to thrust it forward. Definitely not like an RC car. But when you get some forward speed, it basically turns into a drift car. An awesome flying drift car. Break. Nice. One thing I noticed is that it'll sometimes drift a bit too much, spin out, and lose all of its speed. I think what's happening here is that the yaw rate mapping I did is too aggressive, and there isn't quite enough banking at these higher speeds either. But I do like the current control mapping when I'm at lower speeds, as it gives me really good fine control and coordinated turns. So I need a way to change the control mapping across different forward speeds. One problem with this is that I don't have a way of directly measuring my speed. Integrating the flight controller's accelerometer measurement will lead to lots of drift, and I don't want to put a GPS on here. But I can assume that my throttle input loosely corresponds to speed. More commanded throttle means I'm probably trying to go faster. So what I can do is specify the control input mapping I want at zero throttle and at full throttle. I'll calculate both of these in the code as if I were applying either of them on their own, but then use the normalized throttle input position to interpolate between them. So now I get my original control mapping at zero throttle, my new mapping at full throttle, and a smooth transition between the two. I got this all coded up and then headed back out to try some FPV flying. And also, a big shout out to my AI co-pilot Skydio for these awesome air-to-air -air shots. It was still a little drifty, but definitely much better at higher speeds with the revised control mapping. But at the end of the day, I think I like this thing because it is drifty. It makes it incredibly fun and unlike anything else I've ever flown. Or, uh, driven. Flying up and down hills was tons of fun too. Unlike an RC car, you never need to worry about a hard landing when you get some air at the top thanks to drone stabilization and altitude hold code. Now that's some sweet active aero and suspension if I've ever seen some. Of course I promised some speed tests, so let's push this thing to its limits in a straightaway. I duct tape my phone on top with a speedometer app, which was my best idea yet. 
Surely these speed runs would go perfectly and I wouldn't crash with my thousand dollar phone strapped on top. So I just went for it. All right, here we go. My first pass went well, but was a little slow. So then I lined up for another pass. Whoa. Oh. I think what happened was that when I pitched back to brake, the airfoil shaped motor mounting arms caught a whole lot of lift and the whole thing shot up in the air against the wheel of my altitude controller. Then due to the rapid accelerations, the flight controller got a bit confused and we took a tumble before I could disarm it. Surprisingly, nothing was broken and my phone was okay, so I kept going for more speed. It was really funny watching this thing shoot into the air when I braked, but I figured out how to manage it without crashing. After a few passes, I got a top speed of about 50 miles an hour. Not mind-boggling fast, but I'll still claim the world speed record for a flying drift car, mainly because there's only like three of these things in existence, so surely this one's the fastest. But that's where you come in. I'll be releasing all the 3D files, code, parts list, and instructions to build your own, all completely free and open source. I'll link to all that in the description, and I look forward to seeing how fast others can get theirs to go. I'll also link my Patreon in the description if you want to support these types of projects in the future. I really enjoyed sharing early access 3D files and project updates to my patrons over the course of this project. Anyways, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next flying project, and let me know what kind of stuff you like to see. Cheers.